All right, so we only did nine points today, but still, not bad. Uh, let's see, Lampert and Tulula have also competed. We've increased our relationship with Casper, which is nice, I guess. I think we, he's on my list of uh, rumors, so I guess it's nice that we now have a little relationship with him. Now it's a little less stocky, but whatever. And we've also raised our relationship with the professor, which is always good. I wonder if that affects exam scores. Hypothetically speaking, it really shouldn't. <laughs> and probably they wouldn't think to do that for the game. But it's weird that that crosses my mind. Uh, damn it, Meridius College has impressed Legate Orsa Orsi. Oh, well. The school year's not over, but hopefully that's not the last day. We're getting close to the end of the school year, though. We've increased our leadership skill by one and learned about Sally Forth, which looks like a uh, lore. And we've also learned about rejection. Well, you also learn about that later in life as well, but let's see here. Uh, decrease glamour, decrease incantation, decrease revision. That's a really mean thing to do. We're not doing any, like, combative stuff. Like, I think we only have, like, one or two people who don't like us, and it's by, like, one point, so who cares? Uh, let's see, Lampert, Netta did not succeed at study or get ready for glamour. Yeah, Casper is one of the people we follow. Uh, Silk, Philip, Evelyn did not succeed at study, prepare for a raid, or history. And Prudence, uh, succeeded using practice music on herself. Good for her. Did not succeed at study or call into question, though. Durand is now at 610. We have passed Vernon. We are right behind Morvidius now. Now, Okay, I know what we're doing on weekends and holidays. If there's any holidays coming anytime soon. Not for a little bit. Probably not this session, either. Okay, so for Monday, let's go on an adventure. That sounds like fun. That sounds hip. That sounds cool. Let me save. I don't know, I feel silly today. Maybe that's because I'm getting sick. Alright, let us find a venture to go on. Oh, there's a blue one. That could be interesting. This is interesting. Scenes from dialectic class. The edge of nowhere sounds kind of cool. What happens when you break curfew? That's a good question. An invitation to serve the regent. Regent. Wow. I'm... Mm. Yeah, you know what? Let's try an invitation to serve the... I'm assuming that says regent. I don't... Oh, me and words today are not friends. <laughs> you have a message from your regent, uh, Professor Biardi. Oh yeah, she is the... Uh... I keep saying headmaster, but you know, that's because of Harry Potter. But yeah, she's the leader of my college, I believe. Yes. Uh, let's see. You got a message for your regent uh, from the legate of Akamagia, Professor Orsi. Held in high regards for her proficiency in the art of negation, uh, Biardi is the first woman regent of Durand. The oldest and most prestigious of the colleges, named after King Duran, whose lands encompassed what is now Merrill. Your college motto, Courage and Hope, has become associated with the earth, agriculture, nature, and the powers of denial against draconic magic. You feel lucky to have this young, attractive, what? <laughs> Bit odd, but sure, professor leading your college, and you're more than happy to deliver a message to her. Yeah, make your delivery and wait for a response. After thanking you for delivering it, you wait to see if Professor Biardi has a reply for the legate. To your surprise, the even-tempered professor, normally placid demeanor, undergoes an abrupt transformation as she reads the note. Whatever it contains, the news is not good. She attempts a wan smile as she thanks you for delivering the message, but there's no response for you to carry back. Later that afternoon, after delivering the message, you happen to be passing beneath an open window of the kitchen and overhear Biardi speaking to the head chef. She sounds upset, intrigued you tiptoe closer to the window to listen. 
Unfortunately, we must have a dinner in his honor, and the legate has asked me to make sure that it runs smoothly, she says. As you know, the ambassador of Prigoria's nation is jealous of Minton power, and the ambassador is thoroughly corrupt. I do not trust him the least bit. I fear that he has ulterior motives for this visit, and wherever they are, I just know they're not good. Be sure that your servers keep a close eye on the ambassador of Pigoria and his entourage during the dinner, and report any suspicious behavior to me. Of course, Madame Professor. We will do as you say. I will prefer... <laughs> I will prepare a menu for the banquet and get it to you right away for your approval. We will not disappoint in you in any way, the head chef asserts her, emphasizing, in any way. Good, and keep our conversation private. I know I can count on your discretion. Only professors and older academy students attend important dinners, but you're determined to help your regent monitor the dangerous Prigorian ambassador and his entourage. The servants will be busy and they might miss something important. You must find a way to attend the banquet and observe the ambassador's character and behavior. Professor Biardi will be grateful for your help. Would you like to come along and discover the real reason for the ambassador's visit to the Catamagia? I like how we just assume Professor Biardi will be grateful for the help. Why would we fuck up? Uh, not right now, thank you. Uh, Yes, or observation, find another way. Ooh, that's interesting. Let's, ooh, let's look into that. I want to look into that. Maybe there's more here than you think. You take a second to investigate your surroundings. This seems like a simple yes or no decision, but you're sure there's something else you can do. Something that will cut to the chase and allow you to decide if you really need to get involved or not. Ooh, reason, get into the ambassador's chambers. That sounds like a terrible idea. Okay, so we can either snoop at the dinner and keep an eye on everyone, which is a good cop move, which that was the original idea for this character. He wants to one day be, well, I guess cops aren't a thing in this world, but a detective, a, you know, investigative character who follows the law. But also, get into the ambassador's chambers and look for things sounds like a detective-y thing as well. Oh, one is more riskier than the other. Let's... But you know what? It says reason. So, you know, that, that must be a good thing. You're reasoning. It doesn't say break in using my break in skill. It says reason. Perfectly fine. Maybe you can think of something that will help in this situation without being too much of a hassle. You close your eyes and focus on what you know, hoping to conjure an idea of out of thin air. Luckily, you do. If they're up to anything, surely the evidence would be in their chambers, right? If you find something, you're in. If not, it's no big deal. Now to find a way into the fancy uh, places where ambassadors go. I cannot take this anymore. Arian Liddell informs you. Is this part of the adventure or is this something else? Probably something else. Oh, I, I know you. you. We went to the orphanage together. What happened? Shivering in a dark black coat that covers as much as him as possible, leaving only pale figures, a pale face, tufts of white hair and red eyes staring out, he looks more dead than alive, like some horrible reaper. A shivering reaper, admittedly. Never mind that the rooms for the a villa Boys towers are barely large enough to hold one person, and there's around five spare rooms on our floor. They have me crammed in there with Cyrus, because they thought, with my condition, I would need a roommate. Like Cyrus and I would ever be have anything to talk about. But I have nothing against Cyrus, really. I feel bad for him, even though he gets the bed. I mean, what? They didn't even give you two beds? That's bullshit. <laughs> um... Aaron yanks at a bit of his hair in what must be frustration, but it's disturbing all the same. I sleep on a cot. Oh god, that sucks. Like the ones in the infirmary. I live out of one drawer from the wardrobe. There's no place to hang my stuff up because Cyrus has five million robes for properly impressing the girls here at the school. 
We just took the wardrobe drawer out of the wardrobe and since on top of everything else I own, which fits in two packing boxes. This is a shitty situation. It's basically all my textbooks and school supplies. Then the three th things I still have. He shakes his head vigorously. First of all, he's in the treasure hunter. Okay, just mo I just thought it would be funny if the him and Cyrus were in the same clique. Um, second thing is, what's his condition? Alright, sounds like he uh, he's in the infirmary a lot, so maybe he gets sick a lot. He shakes his head vigorously. Anyway, our dorm's window is just made of regular glass. Because, you know, that Professor Bad Crumble can't take a moment to get it reinforced because the world forbid a single pin gets used for the sake of the horrible boys evading the beautiful maidenhood of the villa college or, or some rot. Fine. What is not fine, three days ago, Jumper thought she saw a storm. Okay. So, Cape Bad Crumble is the region for a villa, and a villa used to be an all-girls dorm. Or college. So, I think just recently they've changed that to boys. But Jumper saw a storm, so I'm guessing Jumper is his uh, familiar. We don't have that information, though. Aaron smacks his hands together in emphasis. Boom! Jumper goes out the window. I'm not even mad at the stupid dog. I like her. She keeps uh, Tepti active and she's pretty cheery. No, what I am mad about is that was three days ago. Days. It's about to be the fourth night and despite having told the dorm master and then the regent that very night, no one has come to revision our stupid window back together. Okay, so Jumper I guess might be Cyrus's pet and it broke the window got it we collected the shards all nice and neat but i'm not even sure if the revision can be done anymore now that so much time has passed and we are not allowed to bring another student in to the tower to try to revision it because apparently the dorm master and region don't want other colleges to see how tower 8 is being treated so we have to wait for one of them to fix it but this does nothing at all to make up for the fact that it's freezing. Fuck, they are treating this kid bad. I mean, Cyrus too, but fuck. Aaron attempts to breathe and he sounds slightly hysterical. So you know what? I am setting it on fire. Oh no, I am setting Dorm Tower 8 on fire. I will get suspended and kicked out, but as I am going to die anyway if this situation continues, I do not even care anymore. Better to die on my own terms than on theirs. He pauses and then beams at you. Want to help? <laughs> oh, I love this kid. Oh, I'm sorry, but I just love when someone's main plan is just to set everything on fire. You know they got good character. A revision. Well, you know revision. You can fix the window really quick. Diplomacy, time to talk to Regent Bad Crumble again. She can be a bit weird, but there's no way she'd want the students of Olivia to something. We're gonna minimize the text by two. No way she want the students of a villa to suffer female or male. To suffer female or male. Go back to two because I like that size. Rally, there's no better way to get revenge. Stage a goblin revolt. What? Where, where did the goblins come from? A revision. Look, you're going to sneak me into the tower. I'm going to fix it. And then we're done. It's fine. It's fine. Also make your bed into like... Uh, you're caught into an actual bed with magic, probably. I can probably do that. No, you can't, Oran says bitterly. That is the whole problem. If I take you to the tower, the dorm master will find me and kill me. And then I will not get to have revenge. If I'm going to die... I really want revenge first. You don't need to go into the tower, though. You point out the window after all faces outside. Oh, right, Aaron says brightly. You can cast provision spells at that distance. I am impressed. Well, you are pretty skilled. You have him lead you around the tower, and yep, there's the broken window. It's really battered up. You wonder if poor Jumper got hurt with all the flying glass. I hope not. 
For now though, you just pull out your wand and go through the motions. In a moment, the window is fixed as good as ever. Cyrus quickly appears at the window and smiles and waves down at you. Aaron himself just grins at you, looking relieved. Thank you. Now we won't freeze to death. You're welcome. I feel good. I, I feel like we did something really good. Alright, so we embarked on this adventure, so now it's going to be fun finding out what the next one's called, but hey, whatever. Uh, Durand's merit went up, thanks to Durand. You temporarily increased your chance of success by 25, and you increased your reason skill by 1. You have added circumvent reason to yourself, which is a spell that decreases reason, courage, and plot. So it's a mean spell, got it. You have added detail plan to yourself, so it increases choice of subskill, increased chance of success, and expands stress. Interesting. Could be useful. Let's see, I've increased my relationship between me and Aaron, or Aran, I don't know, and Cyrus, which is all good. Let's see, Prudence uh, did not succeed at study. Evelyn succeeded at using, uh, tried to solve a block puzzle. And Netta took the day off. Good for her. And Duran's at 613. Alright, so let's do the adventure. Let's just see if we can do the next part of that. It's red. Hmm. That's not good. Well, let's take today off. Let's, uh, compete. Yeah, we'll compete twice and on thursday we'll find another one to do or we can do that and fail oh i can do that reload the save and know what we have to bring up i mean it's not a good idea but we can all right brought up merit by six which is really good no else did it tabin philip evelyn to see at hanging out with herself and Courtney de Sorval. Silk, Casper, Lambert, Prudence, rested. Netta did not succeed at study. 